I'd like to welcome um, Abilek Bord Vaj, who's Head of Operations Strategy at 3UK, and he is going to talk to us about monitoring and troubleshooting 5G, a strategic perspective. I think that's something we could all benefit from. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Annie. Um, <clears throat> so in, in the era of, of 5G, of distributed cloud, cloud native microservices, and evolved expectations from, from a business perspective, customer perspective, I think monitoring has never been um, more critical to the success of um, especially a telco business. Um, however, monitoring and troubleshooting is, is often seen as complex and overwhelming, um, especially technically. Um, so hopefully this, this, is a, this is a change from uh, a purely technical perspective uh, by uh, bringing a strategic perspective to the table, which can be often a, a practical and helpful guide for uh, maturing our 5G monitoring and troubleshooting operations. Um, so, <clears throat> my name is Abhilek, Abhilek Bhardwaj. I'm the Head of Operation Strategy and CSI at 3UK, um, and here I go. Um, so, as, as I said, monitoring and troubleshooting is seen from a technical lens, and in the context is often forgotten, or at least not paid um, enough attention to. And that begs the question, where does most of the monitoring and uh, troubleshooting happen? And I'm going to... Um, simplify um, monitoring and troubleshooting by, by calling it as m and uh, sometimes in, in the subsequent slide. Hope that's okay. Um, and I think when I ask that question, uh, the answer naturally takes me to the to the NOC. And in the nature of you know the NOC as we have seen traditionally has been manual, consolidated, centralized, and that that was a big uh, step up from. Um, the previous era, uh, where we al almost did not have any knock or very basic knocks, um, and they are typically, you know, located in a, in a suburb or a small city with call center seating and shiny LED TV screens. Where, but, but the main point is that you know all people, process, and technology are supposed to be located in the same area, same location, um, because that's the um, the nature of the traditional knock. And this often gets reflected in the monitoring solution, which has been monolithic, on-prem, um, with lots of manual workflows. And the process of monitoring has been segmented between various teams, and almost no one looks at it um, from an end-to-end -end quality of service perspective, uh, primarily because of lack of um, tooling. Um, the tools are hard to learn because they need um, special uh, technical expertise. Um, which over time makes operations difficult as the pressures, which I'm gonna talk about in the subsequent slide, um, need to be addressed. For example, one needs to be, um, would need to be a 3GPP call flow expert to troubleshoot the call flows. Um, the good news is that the NOC is evolving uh, and it's, it's evolving fast. Um, and in, in not so distant future, uh, I would expect uh, an ideal 5G knock to be digital, uh, if not fully, at least mostly digital distributed um, so that we don't really need to have all the people in one physical place and basically have the operate from anywhere principle, which effectively also means by incidentally operate from any screen because you'll have um, you know, mobiles and tablets uh, giving you the kind of information that you need to operate. Um, so, so that begs the question, if the NOC is distributed, isn't it better to put the monitoring solution, uh, you know, in, in, in a similar format, in, i.e. In, 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 in a distributed cloud? Although that's just one of the reasons why cloudification of monitoring might be um, a good thing. Um, the, sorry. Um, and the, the other way to look at NOC um, which gives monitoring and troubleshooting its context is that the knock of the future is not just a, um, a monitoring and a troubleshooter um, uh, agent. Uh, basically, it's it enables business transformation, uh, but that can only happen if there is an effective monitoring and troubleshooting solution uh, backing the knock. Um, 
in fact tm forum has a, has a uh, there's there's an article uh, on the tm forum website which i came across which has a uh, a quite good uh, knock vision blueprint where most of the key capabilities on the right hand side that you can see are delivered based on solid monitoring and troubleshooting uh, solution for example the zero touch management self healing open integration um, and intelligent dashboarding to say the least um, having looked at the context of um, the monitoring and then troubleshooting solution, let's look at how um, monitoring and troubleshooting has evolved over the years. And I think uh, monitoring and troubleshooting or MNT has struggled to catch up with the technology uh, evolution. There's a clear gap between where we are, where, where we need to be. Um, starting from um, you know, the, the 2G uh, and then to some extent 3G era of physical network function, we evolved to physical and virtualized, a combination of PNF and, and VNF uh, technology estate, uh, moving on to distributed cloud, uh, which, which had still had virtualized network functions. And now with 5G SA, we're moving to cloud native uh, or, or CNF uh, network functions. Uh, if if, if, in fact, if I, you know, if, if we treat monitoring and troubleshooting as, as a capability and think mathematically, the MNT function can be described in, you know, as 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 given on the screen, the monitoring and troubleshooting of 5G is equal to monitoring and troubleshooting of what's new in 5G, what's new in 4G, what's new in 3G, plus the basics. And I think, um, in 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 my experience, you know, before we start thinking about or worrying about concerning ourselves with, with the new shiny stuff in 5G or 4G or 3G, we need to in, ensure that the, the basics are, are not ignored because that's the foundation. Um, on the, 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 the key stakeholders which are impacted because um, of uh, the struggle to catch up with the technology evolutions are the NOC, as I said earlier, the service operations, security operations, and the customer operations. And all of this has, has a big, big business impact. Uh, moving on to 5G specifically, um, I think we need to ask fundamental questions. What is interesting to monitor or what should we be monitoring in, in 5G? And what and how we might need to troubleshoot in, in, in 5G? To answer the questions above, we need to know what is critical for the business which leads us to the question, what are the customer use cases? Um, so starting from, from the top, the key 5G challenges are the new demands that are, that are being put to, to support diverse use cases, uh, immersive AR, VR, real-time video surveillance and analytics, cloud robotics, process automation, for example, railway uh, and, and travel automation. Uh, the second, is the customer expect expectations, which put an ever increasing demand on quality of experience monitoring to fulfill key 5G perform uh, performance pr promises of ultra reliability, low latency, high bandwidth services. Um, customers are, uh, in, at least in some part of the parts of the world, they are expecting uh, things like uh, an individual drop call rate to be reported uh, on their bill. And that's interesting because that puts a huge uh, load on monitoring and, and troubleshooting infrastructure of, of the telcos. The third point about uh, the technology estate being distributed, hyperscalable, uh, cloud-based with a dynamic network topology, which changes with time uh, or changes every second, uh, also has unlimited, practically, un I mean, you know, logically unlimited number of network functions based on um, what is required um, at any given point in time. Um, uh, application instances, uh, microservices, all this makes monitoring cloud native resources very tricky. And fourth, um, the number of devices, uh, especially because of the IoT uh, evolution. Now, all of this, these four points are something that, that I consider as above the line in the sense that they are visible and then the changes, uh, changes can be seen. But there are there are a number of things happening which are kind of below the line, uh, which are not that visible, not talked about, or not addressed 
um, in, in, in the wider public forums. And these are mainly three of uh, you know five, six, and seven. So ops teams are drowning in the overflowing data lakes. We have a data lake, right? We have data. Uh, fine, the, the quality is not may not be hundred percent or close to be uh, you know close to hundred percent. But but the challenge, main challenge is you know whether it, in telco business or any business, nobody can um, deal with unlimited data. So there has there has to be a smart strategy to address that. Point number six, end-to-end -end management uh, of, or end-to-end -end view of um, services is becoming even more difficult. Imagine trying to create uh, a, an end-to-end -end service model of, of a basic voice or, or a data call, which used to be a challenge in, in the past. With 5G, especially with network slices, for you know, which can be different for different customers, this challenge is increasing because we've got, we've got multiple virtual networks in, in the form of network slices, within the same network. And finally, OPEX reduction pressure. Uh, as I said earlier, um, this is a challenge which uh, you know, is often not ignored, but um, it's, it's not talked about because uh, people assume that if there's a new technology, then there has to be um, some spend on it. But I think um, there's a practical challenge that uh, especially operations team face from an OPEX uh, management perspective. And on the right hand side, you can see uh, some of the use cases, and I, I would say most of these use cases are still in the developing stage. Um, because uh, the exact requirements of latency throughput and reliability are fast changing, uh, but we do have a broad idea. Uh, so effectively, all in all, this gives us our high level objectives from a um, or, or challenges from a, from a monitoring and troubleshooting perspective. So we haven't yet answered uh, our two questions of what should we be monitoring in 5G and what and how we might need to, to, to troubleshoot in, in 5G. And this is a slide which kind of, um, I, I hope you, you agree with me that decoding this, this um, uh, challenge or, the, or this topic is complicated. Um, and this is probably why uh, whenever there's a major incident, um, the ops teams, um, the, the teams troubleshooting, the technical teams, they go into a tailspin. And the reason for that is there are multiple layers of monitoring. As you can see, there is a, there's a layer for, from a customer perspective. There's a layer from a service perspective, end-to-end -end service perspective, as I said earlier. And then there's a layer from a resource perspective, things like network traffic, cloud infrastructure. So, and all of these uh, have different needs. So, at the customer level, there's a need to monitor individual customer uh, or subscriber experience or even device experience. At the service level, end-to-end -end voice and database services. At the resource level, um, the cloud infrastructure, as an example. And the typical issues that, that we see at the customer level are, okay, for a specific MZ, what's happening and why it's happening? Or for a uh, specific IoT device. At the service level, it's voice and data service degradation, the network slice performance issues, which again, we are starting to see, but I think we, we, you know, there's, um, there's a lot of maturity yet to have, take place in, in that area. And from a resource layer, we know uh, we, have, we have struggled, what we have struggled with from a cloud infrastructure or network perspective. And the, the tooling required hence is different. So we have different tool set for different layers. Uh, there is customer experience management tooling, there's service assurance platform for service layer, and there are, then there are multiple, you know, uh, virtual and physical probes and packet capture and visualization tools, the, the element management systems, the network management systems, and then so on. Um, so, you know, all of this comes into play whenever there's a there's a major incident. Um, so, taking from a resource layer, uh, if, if if we take um, core as an example. Um, that can be further that so there are layers within the layers right so core has a data layer to monitor the control plane to monitor the user plane to monitor and something called as core slice which needs to be monitored or managed um so there are different things to troubleshoot in each of these layers uh, some of these are individual resource components like databases mobility management network function policy management function um, at the user plane there's user plane function um, and at the core, uh, from, from an end-to-end -end perspective, there are individual services to be monitored. As I said before, networks, the different network slices for different customers need to be monitored as a service or an end-to-end -end service. 
Um, let's try to, um, you know, this is a logical architecture for core. And, and the purpose of showing this is, is to emphasize the components and interfaces that, that need to be more, uh, or need to be monitored or which can be of interest to monitor for 5G monitoring and troubleshooting. Um, I won't go into the details when, because that's for an, uh, another session, but if we try to do, dig a, a little more deeper um, and talk about the session establishment uh, where, it, where when it comes to troubleshooting the call flows. So beyond the components and interfaces, there are call flows which are helpful for troubleshooting service degradation issues for customers, for um, uh, subscribers. Um, without going into the details, you know, you can see how the components interact um, and you know, what we need uh, is, is some sort of a tooling which helps us um, with, with a visual picture of what's happening in these call flows. And this is where packet capture and packet visualization tools are helpful. Again, I won't go into the individual um, steps, uh, but this is just for one uh, session establishment call flow. And then we talk about network slices. Um, and monitoring network slice parameters and customer experience can be can be tricky. So we, we saw the logical architecture before. If you if on the left hand side you can see the, uh, the almost like a physical architecture which uh, ranges from the the new radio to all the way to the central cloud. And the end to end if if we have to measure the end to end um, network slice parameters like latency, bandwidth, um, availability then all of these needs to be stitched together uh, and needs to be reported on a uh, you know, real time basis. So effectively, it, basically we have three different, uh, uh, as, as you can see on the screen, we've got three different network slices, one for enhanced mobile broadband, the other one is for low lat latency applications and the other one is machine to machine communications uh, in a single physical network. So this puts the, um, the monitoring and troubleshooting in perspective. If you look at it from the, the same picture from a, a device perspective, what, what's happening with the device, you could have multiple slices present on the same device. So uh, monitoring and troubleshooting customer experience uh, is, is much more tricky in 5G as compared to what it used to be in, in 4G and before. Again, the purpose of today's session is to give a strategic uh, perspective, so I'll not go into, into the details. So what are the lessons learned? I think uh, one of the key lessons learned is back to the basics. And this is a slide where, uh, which kind of summarizes um, the key high level strategic requirements at diff for different layers. Uh, starting with the customer and service layer, uh, there's a need for real time end-to-end -end view of traffic call flows across all domains, RAN, transport, and core. Um, uh, some sort of a service performance monitoring, even if it is not real time, but, but near real time on demand service testing, whereby we know once uh, uh, you know some problem uh, is identified and once it's fixed, um, is it really fixed on, on, on the ground or not? So that's kind of on demand service testing. The ability to troubleshoot voice and data calls, calls with equal ease. We have seen um, sometimes uh, Troubleshooting voice call is, is easier uh, because of the technological complexity, uh, but the tool, uh, the effective tooling can actually uh, ensure that both of these are um, equally easy to, to, uh, to monitor and, and, and troubleshoot. At the resource layer, we need real-time decoding, packet slicing, and deduplication of IG traffic. Um, deduplication is important, and that's one of the ways how um, the, uh, the size of the data that needs to be stored or transported can be managed. Uh, Real-time health performance monitoring of infrastructure, uh, that's, that's a given by you know, uh, any cloud platform, for example. Capability to automatically generate events and alerts, um, appropriate level of granularity of data, uh, like events, KPIs, and, and alerts, so that uh, we don't have to wait for 15 minutes or half an hour before we start reporting the, the improvement or um, the change in metrics or, or KPIs. 
So we need to ensure that all the different network functions have that level of, or support that level of granularity that is required by the business. Ability to simultaneously capture, capture and analyze data in near real time. This is important because um, the, you know, there's no point in uh, trying to analyze, or there's little point in trying to analyze something that happened two weeks ago. Um, and for all layers, we need near real time dashboards for tracking metrics and KPIs, um, capability to push relevant data. Uh, this is again from a data management perspective, how do we ensure that we only store and process that much data that, that we really need uh, from a package perspective and the, the telemetry from infrastructure. Um, plug and play capability between legacy and new solutions. From an OPEX perspective, this is a, this is a must have. Uh, there's, no, there's no way we can have you know, or, or support uh, or afford uh, multiple monitoring and uh, troubleshooting solutions for multiple technologies. Because at the same time, you need to support 4G, 5G, um, and and beyond um and then of course and this has been say, said uh, a, a lot but i think um we, we do need a we need we, we do need to move away from a manual static rule based monitoring automation to automated thresholds improvements because what we have seen is in a, in a in a given platform there can be thousands uh, or sometimes hundreds of thousands of metrics to to be um, kind of thresholded um, but then if it is manual and left to, to humans, you know, the, the, the number of network elements that we have, the number of parameters that we have, the number of services that we need to, need to support makes it imperative for us to ensure that there is an automated solution to this um, highly intensive manual task. Uh, and that can be done through uh, or with the help of AI ML. And finally, workflow management for zero touch operational flows. So all in all, that, that basically points to a highly adaptable monitoring and troubleshooting solution. You know, if it even if it meets part or all, you know, uh, of these requirements. Um, I, I, I just uh, didn't almost didn't want to put the the second um, or the right hand side uh, of the slide uh, because it, it's kind of obvious that you know operations won't be able to perform monitoring and troubleshooting of these services. But again, this the reason I'm putting it there is because there is a need to go back to the basics. Um, if you're not able to cater to these requirements or fulfill these requirements, then at least some of this that you see on the right hand side will, will happen. Manners will be lost because of the time it took to, or, or to, to start investigations, to even start, you know, because sometimes people don't know where to start. And even after the fix is implemented, it will take too long to understand and confirm whether the service has recovered. For example, the um, the point about level of granularity of data as a, as, a, the, as, as an example. And this would effectively mean unhappy customers churning out and business suffering loss of revenue, market share and reputation. Um, so what's the bottom line? Um, I think uh, from my perspective, uh, I started this uh, presentation with, with the context. Um, and I think the, the context is, is important. Um, so once we understand the context, uh, the, we, we can then uh, start devising or kind of zeroing in on, on, on the tool set. And from a tooling perspective, we, you know, some sort of an end-to-end -end solution comprising of a suite of products to build a single view of service across SDN, NFV, physical and cloud, which fulfills key functional requirements, which is itself a cloud-based platform with low processing needs, to lower cost and then you know to ensure that um, better operability, which is easy to implement and doesn't take long. Uh, we, we, we can't afford a one and a half year transformation program of, of our monitoring and troubleshooting solution and easy to use by key users um, so that the uptake of the solution is, is, is there. Uh, meets regulatory and security requirements, for example, GDPR, um, has open APIs and is able to integrate with legacy tech to avoid regrettable spend. Uh, and finally, uh, automation supports automation of service workflows to ensure that the time it takes to, um, you know, from production of data to insight generation, the latency is kept to a minimum and decision making can happen in near real time. Um, so, you know, while while we keep the context in mind and we keep the the tooling in mind and we have we know how what kind of a tool we are looking for from a strategic perspective. 
We need to also ensure that the ways of working and processes are optimized. For example, managed services, how the um, most of our operations are um, outsourced. So how will um, the interworking between different teams within the managed services partner or between different managed service partners and the telco would, would, would happen. And finally, to, uh, last but not the least, you know, we need people ready and, and, and engaged to monitor and troubleshoot. Monitoring and troubleshooting, at least not in the foreseeable future, will 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 need there. Uh, we'll need people to do this. Uh, so to ensure that we um, plug any skill or or training gaps, that's that's going to be critical. And with that, um, I've come to the end of my um, presentation. I think uh, in the end, what I would like to say is we need to get the basics right uh, before planning any uh, implementation of any, any any new shiny features, uh, whether it's for 5G or for any other technology. Um, we there is no you know silver bullet um, for monitoring and troubleshooting, uh, as you know we have recently found out uh, at 3 UK because I think a, a lot depends on how 5G itself is implemented. Um, and, and, and lastly, uh, once, once we get the basics right and once we have a uh, suite of products uh, in the solution identified, we need to ensure that the delivery of that happens in a, in a um, kind of a crawl, walk, run, uh, in a step-by-step -step manner rather than um, a, a big trans transformation program which takes years and years to um, give results. So that's all from me. That was, um, as the, one of our audiences just noted, really interesting. So um, with these metrics where you've got thousands or hundreds of thousands, I mean, that's all stuff to drive you mad. And especially if some of them are false alarms and give you the wrong idea or blah, blah, blah. I mean, so what's your solution to dealing with them? Like CICD, CT? I mean, so what? I think... Um... There is a, you know, uh, as I said before, we need a combination of human intelligence and artificial intelligence here. Um, I think we, we're not far from uh, the point when we start creating models which actually identify which are the uh, dependent variables and the independent variables um, from a sea of, you know, data that, that we get. Uh, but again, we need to train those models uh, and that requires human intelligence. So I think it's a combination of both, which which will which is an, an ideal solution. I, but but I do understand that you know at least in my experience this hasn't happened uh, in full. Uh, there are still proof of concepts that are taking place. Yes, I'm trying to think of who I was speaking to recently, who pointed out that training models is not a quick or easy thing, and you make a lot of mistakes and you have to go back and figure it out. It's not uh, press the button and off it goes. Sort of thing. And we almost talk about machine learning, which is the most commonly used form of AI right now. We almost talk about it as though it is hit the button and off it goes. And it's uh, it's clearly not even close. Um, the other thing I was going to ask you, it was interesting your comment about the different managed services. So generally, you've outsourced these various areas of operation. So is your main responsibility sort of ensuring that those different managed services interoperate correctly? I think it depends on the governance model, but um, depending on whether uh, we have implemented the, you know, uh, you know, this, how we have implemented the service management of our operations. So if we are the, um, when I say we, I mean, if the telco is the, uh, is the okay. mediator, so sort of, uh, yeah. lack of a better word, uh, then it's telco's responsibility. But what I've also seen as a model is that model itself is outsourced to a, uh, to a prime or a, or a major uh, managed service partner who then manages the other managed service partners on behalf of the telco. So both models work. Oh, okay. And I was going to say, if you've got a preference or any comments on which works better or I guess because every operator and where they are and where they want to get to is so different I guess that's probably quite tricky I I my my personal preference is is uh, that I always take a hands-on approach uh, which means that I would like uh, it's not a question of control it's just a question of knowing what's happening in my network and that can only happen if 
I have access to the tools and yeah, I have so yeah. myself. Yeah. Okay. Uh, interesting. Um, yeah, it makes those of us at this end of the deal glad we only write about it and report on it and don't actually have to do it. Because it makes it, it's so it's a very complex business. Um, thank you very much. That was a really good session as ever. And we look forward to seeing you, I hope, at a future event. Thank you. Thank very you very much. much. Thank you, everyone.